Uh, so, uh, Vic Williams said, nothing to worry about. We're just updating it. It is what it is. People are still a little bit freaked out. Some people are calling it overreaching. Others like me are worried about the, the words annoy and offend. I didn't know you could be arrested for that. Um, Ted Vogt, state rep, joins me right now. And the good thing is he didn't put out a press release saying that people that uh, think this might be a little bit out there are crackpots. Uh, he has not done that. State Rep Ted Vogt joins us on KNST. Hi, sir. How are you? Hey, Gary. How you doing today? I'm doing all right. Now, should I be wearing my tinfoil hat or <laughs> not be wearing my tinfoil hat? Hey, I don't know what you're actually wearing, so I don't know how you coordinate oh, all that. Well, it's radio. It's theater <laughs> of the mind. Well, I just want to make sure, I mean, am I a crackpot for saying, what the hell is this HB 2549? No. Look, I think I think it's important. This is why we have an open process that people, you know, watch what's going on at the legislature. That they, but that and that they weigh in. But it's called a legislative process. And I, I guess the thing that kind of I, I won't say disturbs me, but what I, um, you know, what what should cause us a problem is, is that the media. You you are the first person uh, from the media to reach out and actually ask me uh, what's going on here. Uh, the, the report that was linked to on Drudge Report yesterday from InfoWars uh, is, I would just say, bad journalism. They took a letter uh, that was written prior, prior to the time that the bill was amended in the Senate, and uh, then they just cut and pasted a whole bunch of that letter, even though the bill the bill had been amended, and floated out there as some sort of uh, new information. And then it gets linked to the Drudge Report, and then you've got this this controversy when nobody's ever taken the time to talk to uh, the sponsor or any of the folks uh, that have been involved with the the updating of this legislation. Well, and I talked to you yesterday, and you said, look, this is just saying that if you can't call up somebody on their hundred times or more than two times, let's just say, and uh, and harass them and tell them they suck as a human or I'm going to kill you mm -hmm. or whatever, now you're just saying you can't do that on the phone, you can't do that on their Facebook page, their email, uh, their Twitter, right? Correct. And, and so here's the thing. It's... You know the the book the the law has been on the books here in Arizona since the '60s. I believe the last time it was updated was in the mid '90s. And as we know, technology has evolved a great deal uh, since 1995. And so you you have constitutionally protected speech. You can say whatever you want about an individual on your Facebook uh, on whatever you want to do. But if you are texting them over and over and over again uh, about, you know, you know you, I, they say you hate me or whatever you want, and you just constantly continue to harass me, then I should have some sort of, there, there's some, some sort of recourse there. But if you, if you want to, you can say whatever you want on your Facebook page. You can say whatever uh, you want out there as long as it's not slanderous or libelous uh, for the average citizen, for, for public officials or whatever. Uh, we've actually kind of got a higher standard to meet in terms of uh, people can say things about public officials that they couldn't say about the private uh, a, a private individual or a private citizen. Does that go to a person like me? Because I know you probably get the crazy emails, and I do too. Mm -hmm. And I get the emails, um, you know, especially right after the January 8th shootings, I got a lot of nasty emails, people making a lot of threats to me. Yeah, I, I think you would be considered kind of a, a, a public official or a, 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 a somebody who has made themselves uh, or kind of held themselves out in the public as a kind of a, 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 a famous person, whatever. I mean, movie stars, politicians, hey, and radio show hosts. Sorry, we you know we have to uh, take a little bit more than what the uh, uh, the private citizen would have to take. So, um, uh, by the way, state rep T uh, Ted Vote on KNST AM seven ninety and now ninety seven point one FM. Um, so basically, if I get nasty emails, mm -hmm. more than two, one, you can't do anything, because in this law it says two or more, right? Mm -hmm. So if I get nasty emails or nasty Facebook messages, right now, nothing can happen. I have no legal recourse. Uh, no, I, and, and this is one thing that uh, the the other part that I, I guess I wanted to say is uh, folks need to kind of read the bill because there's there's the there's this there's two sections in that bill. The first part is where we're updating, and if you look at the line, uh, if you look at the draft, we're actually lining through telephone and putting in an electronic device. The second part, 
uh, is talking about stalking. And so the, the Section 2 is laying out the definitions, and we do talk about uh, two or more incidences, etc. But then it says, it talks about what a reasonable person, so it, a reasonable person would feel. So, um, let, let me see here. So, if you're looking in yeah, there, it's like a, if reasonable a reasonable person, person would feel death. threatened for yeah. their life or the life of their family. And who, who comes, so is that, you know, right now the law says if I get, right now if somebody writes me some nasty emails, three, four, five, six, seven, whatever it may be, and I think it's a threat, until this is passed, I have no legal recourse except I can go get a restraining order, right? Uh, uh, yes, you could. If you if you felt threatened, and of course you'd have to go through uh, you know a court of law. But yeah, if you felt threatened, you could get a. Uh, so I get a restraining, restraining order. order, but they wouldn't actually come under some kind of penalty. So this would just add a penalty to it. But because people are saying, why do we need another law? If I feel like I'm being harassed by someone on my Facebook or Twitter or email, I can simply block them. Correct, and 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 that's and that's one of the things that you know if if you if you've got a uh, a Facebook page and it it states in there that um, this is not effective if if you've given somebody permission to you know track you follow you whatever if if you've allowed somebody onto your Facebook page and they keep sending all this stuff but you continue to allow them on there. Then you're you're allowing them to continue. You're giving them permission to continue on. Uh, uh, I guess send this this these these threatening or harassing so messages. As long, yeah, to as, long you. as long as I'm friends with them, they can, they can continue to harass me legally, and there could be no kind of repercussions. Uh, correct. Okay. So then, what's the point of having legislation if people can actually? I mean, is there anything that's out there, technologically speaking, that you're trying to add to bring this up to date that people can't block? Well, well, for instance, your cell phone. And you start getting text messages from an individual. Well, you, 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 again, we're, technology has outpaced uh, the the law as it's currently written. So, you know, somebody's not calling me, but now they're texting me or they're or they're sending they're sending emails to me. If you if you can't block the uh, number from your cell phone. It's it's the same as if they're calling you. So why don't you just have in the bill cellular cellular phone or smartphone? Because, you know, when you see multimedia storage device, wireless communications, um, you're thinking laptop, you're thinking iPad or tablet, and then you're thinking Facebook, and you're thinking everything else. And it seems to me the only thing that you can't block, unless you want to change your number, is your, your phone number. Well, for, for instance, uh, I know there's some, there's some uh, programs through, uh, like, Google or whatever, Google phone or whatever, where you can actually get your voicemail written out in text on your on your uh, laptop or whatever. You know, these are the devices we use now. These are the devices we use to communicate now. It's not the it's not the copper wire telephone anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, what we're trying to do is we're we're trying to cast a, a reasonable limit on here. We're talking about a reasonable definition for what our communication devices are. And then we're taking a law that's been on the books for almost, you know, 50 years now, 40 years now, and and um, just update it to recognize uh, the techno technological advances we've had so far and the communication devices we use. There, there's still ha this has been well litigated legislation uh, over the past 40 some odd years. There still has to be the criminal intent, and we're talking about where an individual is seeking out and directing these messages at an indivi a specific individual or a specific group of individuals. Okay, so I, I have one more. I have another one for you, if sure. you don't mind. We have a state rep, Ted Vote is on KNST AM 790, now 97.1 FM. I'm just curious, again, it does, and tell me not to freak out. Mm -hmm. It's unlawful for any person with intent to terrify, intimidate, threaten, harass, and I'm cool with all those, mm -hmm. but it says annoy or offend. Can we mm -hmm. actually get arrested and charged with the misdemeanor for annoying or offending, on top, I mean, really, emphasis on offending someone, because mm -hmm. people can think that I'm offending people 24-7 just by speaking. Mm -hmm. So then, why are the words annoy and offend there? In, and that's what I'm scared of, because someone who disagrees with my political beliefs or my comments or whatever can then interpret this through some kind of activist judge. That guy's offending, he's on the airwaves, he's on his Facebook, he's, he's everywhere, electronic media. He should be uh, charged with a misdemeanor. Well, what I would say is this. That's not new language. That language has been on the books for decades. 
So that that's not anything that we've added. That's stuff that's gone through the uh, the, the the courts and has been litigated. And what we've got here, and this is and this is the thing that uh, folks need to realize, is it's it's speech coupled with action. You've got you've got this speech, yes. Okay, but, but what, saying, can you, can you but tell me? It's coupled with an action with the criminal intent. Yeah. And that and that's it. There's a mens rea component here with the criminal intent of. Th- so if, hang on. So, so if I say call uh, Ted Vote's office and tell him that HB twenty five forty nine is stupid, and you get all these phone calls, and maybe mm-hmm. some people are dumb, I don't know. Can you say that I somehow broke the law? I mean, because I'm saying do it, and you're saying there's an intent. I'm not saying hurt you or anything like that. Um, that that's where I get a little bit afraid, and I'm wondering, as a lawyer, what's the definition of annoy and offend in this instance? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you know, and the the, the, the case law. Do, I don't have all the uh, case law on on this on this uh, information or on this on this legislation in terms of, like I said, it's been it's been on the books for almost forty years. Uh, here. It doesn't mean, it doesn't mean it's right. I mean, there have been things on the books that we think are absolutely terrible. Like Obamacare is kind of on the books, and we think that's terrible too. So, well, if you have people calling my office. I mean, for 40 years, have, have, have there been, has there been this dragnet of sweeping up people and, and, and prosecuting them? No. Yeah, yeah, but you never know whoever gets in power after you might interpret it a completely different way, and that's what scares the hell out of us. Well, uh, uh, fair enough, but... I mean, the, look, at, look the, at the Commerce the, Clause. The, look, look at the Commerce Clause, the way the Obama administration mm-hmm. and the Democrats have, and the courts really, since, what, 1942, have taken that completely out of context of what it really is, and they use that misinterpretation and that skewed view of the Commerce Clause to shove Obamacare down our throats. We never thought that would happen. Well, and and we've got the court system. It's in court, and I think we're, we're going to have a resolution of this. But the Arizona S- Supreme Court looked at this statute back in, in 1998 and discussed the issue. And, and the, what the court concluded is because the statute covers conduct as well as a particularly defined speech coupled with criminal intent, then this legislation isn't overly broad. So we're not we're not changing, we're not adding any new language in terms of the speech or the conduct or anything else. We're just updating it to to the communication devices that we currently use today. So the the real meat of the bill is unchanged. What we're just talking about now are the devices that we're using. Well, and I have another one for you. We have State Rep. Ted Vote on KNST AM 790 now 97.1 FM. Um, is is all of this or a lot of this covered by things like disorderly conduct, threats and intimidation, that kind of stuff? Isn't it already there and it's covered by it? Uh, well, it's covered by the statute and has been for the past 40 years. Hang, hang on, Paul, Paul's got to follow up on what, what's other other by other statutes. Paul, you're the legal genius on this show. The fact that you have these other laws that exist, whether it be threats or intimidation or disorderly conduct, why does this necessitate this law that may or may not have already existed for so long? Aren't those issues already sort of addressed by threats and intimidation or disorderly conduct? Well, uh, you know, no, I, I, I don't necessarily believe so. Uh, and, you know, one of the things is, is like, uh, who, who do you want expanding... Uh, these these kind of actions. What are what are we going to cover? Do you want an activist judge to do it, or do you want the legislature to do it? Well, then why not have a definition of offend in the statute? Yeah, because I mean that's that's what really is freaking a lot of people out, including me. Well, I, I mean we we can look at it. One of the things that we are going to do is we're going to put in. If you look at section two of the bill. Uh, there's a section in there talking about that uh, this does not include constitutionally protected activity. We're going to uh, put an identical phrase up there in Section 1 to, again, ameliorate the concerns. But, I mean, this, this hasn't been an issue in the past. Well, why do you need to do that? Is Are you just trying to placate the individuals who are, or do you really think that there could be an overreach by the courts or by an activist judge? Or why do you need to put the constitutionality stuff in there? You're just trying to get people to not worry so much about it? Or do you think there's I, I, a, Yeah, a I, think, I think that if, if people are very concerned, we're trying to take some language uh, uh, that, you know, if it, will, if it will help clarify for folks what's going on here, uh, you know, we'll do it. But again, the, the guts of the bill are unchanged. If you look at it, the only things that we're changing is you're lining out 
use of a telephone and putting in electronic or digital device. So right now, if somebody texted me a thousand times, crazy threats or whatever, I'd have no legal recourse to have them, uh, you know, whether it might be threats and intimidation, anything like that, I, there would be no legal recourse I could use against them? Uh, well, I think you'd, you'd have a challenge to fall under this statute. You'd have to, in addition, make the argument to the court that it's, even though it's text messages, it's use of a telephone. So you'd have that extra hurdle okay. to get over. What about Facebook? I mean, what you know, right now, if the people said, I'm going to kill you over and over and over on Facebook, there's nothing legally I could do to have them uh, brought upon any kind of charges, threats and intimidation, whatever it may be? Uh, there may be. I, I, I don't know all the different criminal statutes, well, but then I that, mean, that's, to fall under point, is that, uh, digital stalking or, well, but, but that's or I the guess, point. stalking in if terms it, of the classification well, then why definitions do we, here. Why do we need uh, a law? If, if, it, if already things can happen, why do we need a new law? I don't. I don't know that it can. So should we find that out first before we pass new law? Well, th again, this isn't a new law. This is an updating of an existing law. Again, the 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 guts, the cause of action is unchanged. The, so this, there's, you know, I wouldn't say that there's a substantive change going on here. If you actually go and look at the bill, what's being changed? A telephone is being lined out, and electronic and digital device is being added. And then you're adding all the extra stuff about protecting the constitutionally protected things, right? No, if you go down to Section 13-2923, that was existing language. Now, we are going to take that exact language uh, and go ahead and move it up to Section A. But if it's already in there, why are you doing that? Uh, again, to kind of uh, make it clear to individuals such as yourself that this is not, you know, meant to chill speech or anything like that. Well, it's not making it clear to ourselves. It's making it clear to a judge who, or a police officer who would try and cite somebody under this. We, can, mm -hmm. we don't have the power to make or, or enforce laws here. You do, though. Yeah. But we don't well, and, on and the radio point, here. We're, we're making it clear, even though in the case law... This, this has been this has been clear and has been upheld, but in the statute, we'll go ahead and take that language and put it in there. And like I said, it's it's in section two um, of thirteen twenty nine twenty three, and then you go down to uh, section C one B. That language was pre existing; does not include constitutionally protected activity. So can you see with your, if you want to get this passed and you want to add that amended part to it, mm -hmm. can you see anywhere in the future where someone who uh, disagrees with what I say, with what I believe in political power, mm -hmm. that they can use this to somehow get me arrested or shut me up? I don't, no. But you're opening the door for someone else to possibly do that. Well, you, uh, again, you, you're, you're a broadcaster. And I would say that the, the, the constitutional law on broadcasting, et cetera, is, has been well settled. You know, there's the FCC's 10 dirty words. You know, you're, you're talking about pure speech. We're talking about speech coupled with activity, coupled with criminal intent. So there, there's almost a formula there. And those are the things that the, the, that the prosecution can you give us an example? Prove. Can you give us an example of what criminal intent? I mean, is it simply the, the causing of harm? I mean, is that going to be, obviously that's going to be up to interpretation. The intent to threaten or harass. So if I tell people to call someone's office and it goes on and they just call and say, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. After a while, you'd probably consider that to be harassment, right? Uh, no, I, I mean, look, I'm a public official. That's that's what I deal in. Okay. Um, are you okay with this? Do you think that it's okay for people to like like me and others and listeners to uh, to to challenge us and question this? Are you surprised it's happening? No. This way? No. Absolutely. Uh, listen. This is part of our process. This is this is why we have an open process. This is why we we take a bill. We 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 start moving it through. We have committee hearings on it. We have caucus hearings on it. We put it. We vote on it in one floor, in one house. We send it over to the other house. We move it through. It's a process, and, and I welcome the debate. I think we all welcome the debate. We're we're looking to catch things along the way. Um, so, do you think it was a little bit off by, or maybe I don't know, bad taste for Representative Williams to have the headline at 
Three in the morning released. Uh, Representative Williams refutes crackpots and conspiracy, conspiracy theorist claims regarding HB 2549. Well, I, I I haven't read the press release, and I you know I haven't talked to. Uh, I just read it to you. But well, you you already had him on, so. Well, I'm saying, but I, what about you? I mean, I think it's a little bit off. But again, the headline that he released is Representative Williams refutes crackpots and conspiracy theorist claims regarding HB 2549. I don't I think I'm a crack on. anything like that. that guess that's what I would say. <laughs> you know, I, I think that the, you know, it's a legislative process. We need to have a give and take. And what I appreciate about you reaching out to me is you're the first person to actually reach out to the sponsor to talk about and to discuss what's going on here. Oh, stop giving me credibility. We don't oh, need well, that. You know, I, I love well, speculation and lying. Okay, good, good. But I, I think that, you know, we can we can always we can always do better because legislation at the end of the day is a compromise True. everyone's kind of had their fingers in it and so is it is it crystal clear all the time no okay can we compromise this way can you add something to this for me because as much as i think this is bad <laughs> i want you to add that anybody that has a conversation with their boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, or wife on Facebook for everyone to see, like, happy birthday, happy anniversary, I love you. They need to be arrested and put in prison for life because I'm offended. Well, you that. know, I gosh, as tempting as that would be, I, I kind of feel the same way about Twitter, but I'm going to have to respectfully decline. Come on, society would be much better off if you could make that happen. You know, I, I don't think everybody needs to know about everybody else's movements in the day, but hey, free speech, right? If I was a dictator, man. Only if I was a dictator. <laughs> All right, State Rep. Ted Bo, thank you for uh, for clarifying this. I hope my listeners understand, and uh, we'll get you on as this progresses, okay? Yeah, absolutely, and it will be amended. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Thank you, sir. Take we'll care. Bye-bye. <clears throat> Paul, why, why are you so hostile? Which is what I want to know, too. How was I hostile? Because you're just a hostile person. I was simply asking the question. No, you are very hostile. Don't we hear that so many times? We don't need this law. This law is covered by other laws. We don't need this. This is just... Look, they have to get a paycheck and a pension for something, right? We've already gone over that. That's why I said, right now, somebody could stick on my Facebook page a thousand times, I'm going to kill you, and then nothing legally can happen until this is passed. Well, I will Give remember that break. next time there is Come somebody on. who says, we don't need this law, we already have laws on the books that... Per protect or that would ha prevent this from happening because that's an argument we hear frequently yes yes that is um whatever i i'm just my brain's fried but we you can comment because we've been doing some interviews 880-KNST 880-5678 um look i'm a big supporter of tmc 